Hi, this is live from the early years gallery of the Museum of the U.S. Air Force. So the in front of a new port. And we're just going to kind of tour through here and see some of the planes that are back on display. The um, Thomas Moore Scout went back up on its pylon this week. Very good crowd here today. So we're just kind of touring through. If you have any questions, holler at me. These are exhibits from uh, Theodore Roosevelt's son. <laughs> Lieutenant Quentin Roosevelt when he was shot down in World War I and he was buried with honors by the Germans just at the cross that marked his grave. A 1916 wind tunnel that was used to test airplane and wing designs. A SPAD 13, which was the, one of the mainstay fighters of World War I, used by the Allies. Various artifacts and squadron insignia. And we have a genuine World War I hero here. This was a carrier pigeon and a homing pigeon that was used to deliver messages. This particular pigeon was released from a frontline dugout and actually got reinforcements Hello, visitors, and, welcome and was to named John Silver. So this is a genuine World War I hero. This is the Kettering Bug, which was one of the very first unmanned aerial bombs designed by Kettering from the da from a, a Dayton native this shows the construction of, of the World War one biplanes and early aircraft where it was a wooden frame covered with fabric treated with dope to tighten the skin above is a um, Fokker D D7, which is one of the most common German fighters, and that's a pattern called lozenge camouflage. Here's a little better showing of what the fabric and and dope looked like untreated with one coat of dope, two coats, three coats, and the color, and each coat tightened the fabric or make it water water impermeable and more durable and they would use wires commonly called roebling wires to tension between the wings and keep keep tension on them this shows how they were tightened and adjusted by the turnbuckles and here you can see it on this cutaway And of course, the hat in the ring, which was the insignia of the 94th Aero Squadron, Eddie Rickenbacker's squadron. Eddie Rickenbacker, of course, a Columbus, Ohio native. Famous poem from World War One. When this was made by Bugatti, which was the Germans were good at building. This tells you how many people were killed in World War One, how many, how many soldiers and of the different nationalities were killed. Yeah. 
over eight million, eight and a half million killed and over 21 million wounded in World War I. Coming up on my left is a Caproni bomber. Great big biplane. This is an Italian built, mm -hmm. one of the first, um, what was considered a heavy bomber for the day. Built, in, built by the Italians. And a Lusak 11 here on my right. Lots and lots of history here at the museum. The display coming up here ahead of me has Eddie Rickenbacker's and Hale Gettler's Medals of Honor. Eddie Rickenbacker, of course, the leading American ace of World War I. Also known as part owner of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Eastern Airlines. But there's their Medals of Honor up above. How'd she do? You can see much of this on at nationalmuseum.af.mil too. We have a really good virtual tour. T ambulance from World War One. These are not replicas, these are actual artifacts. The Martin B2, yes, there was a B2 before the stealth bomber. The MB2 by Martin. And you can see how the wings folded for storage. This is a new artifact. This was actually used to start aircraft. The tip of it actually hooked up into a, a matching coupling on the tip of the propeller of the aircraft, and they would spin it over that way. Oh. Have a Curtis P6 Hawk. And the P12. And the Kellett Autogyro. Looks like a helicopter, but the rotor was not powered except to get it turning to start, and it was kept in motion by the forward motion of the aircraft. Boeing P-36, the P shooter. We have an O-28, was, this plane actually crashed in the Arctic, it was up there for about 40 years, it was brought out by helicopter and brought to the museum and restored. The only remaining Martin B-10 Bolo bomber on Earth, returned to us from Argentina. That, air, that aircraft hanging up actually crashed in the Arctic and was there for about 40 years and then brought out by helicopter and restored. There's a video back in, back in the kiosk that tells about it. Excuse me. This was considered our, our first modern bomber because it was a monoplane skin, monoplane metal skin. This is the only one of these left on Earth. It was returned to us from Argentina. But this was considered the first modern heavy bomber. A little trailing parasail that was towed behind submarines for observers in World War I by German U-boats. Coming up, up on my right here is a Hawker Hurricane, which actually there were more, there's far more built than the, than the Spitfires.
And some people think that the hurricane could have won the Battle of Britain by itself, and potentially it could have. So there is a lot of history in this museum. We're going to go across now and go into the World War II gallery. Thanks, Preacher, for sharing that. Yeah, really good crowd today. Lots and lots of people. We're coming now through the exact, exact here. This is the oldest and largest military aviation museum on earth. 100 years old this year. Common uniform of the American soldier in the Pacific. Sorry. Up on the stand here is a Mart is a Martin B eighteen and a Link trainer, which is early simulator how they taught the pilots to fly by instrument. Up ahead is a Curtis P-40 Warhawk flown by the fam famed Flying Tigers. On my left, an, act an actual Mitsubishi A6M0 mainstay that was used on the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Notice that just the wingtips folded and that was said it would fit on the elevators on the Japanese carriers. A B-25 Mitchell type used in the famous Doolittle raid where 16 were launched from the carrier Hornet to retaliate against the Japanese for the attack on Pearl Harbor. A Jeep type aircraft that we use for transporting officers and such throughout and a glider used for basic pilot training and a BT basic trainer. P-36, or an Air Cobra. The engine was mounted behind and below the pilot, run up through a transmission, and the cannon fired through the propeller hub. AT-10 Wichita. One of only 13 remaining B-24 Liberators on Earth out of 18,890 some built. A Bristol Bowfighter, one of the most underrated but beautiful aircraft of World War II by the British. Really good display on the Tuskegee Airmen here, telling about their legacy. Please feel free to share and like this. Artifacts from Tuskegee Airmen.
P39 Air Cobra. Flight jacket worn by Lieutenant, First Lieutenant William Alsbrook. More Tuskegee artifacts. Yes, it does. Plus the virtual, plus the uh, virtual tour, also has the ACI Cockpit 360 app that lets you see in, inside over 116 of the aircraft. Now we're back alongside the um, port rear quarter of the um, of the bow fighter. So I've got just a few more moments I can do this. I'm going to have to get off here in about three minutes because I've got to change shift. We, we change every half hour. These are the Congressional Gold Medals that were awarded by Congress in 2006 to the Tuskegee Airmen and their families. And we are coming up on the Memphis Bell. I'm going to try to get the bell in here before I have to end. The bell, of course, was the first U.S. heavy bomber to survive 25 missions and come back to the States on a war bond tour with her crew. Two movies made about the bell, the documentary during the war, directed by Lieutenant Colonel William Wyler. And then in 1990, a um, feature film directed by Catherine Wyler that starred Matthew Modine, Harry Connick Jr., and Catherine Weiler was William Weiler's daughter. There were actually two movies made about the bell. There was a documentary made during the war directed by Colonel William Weiler, and then the 1990 feature film was directed by Catherine Weiler, his daughter. I think I saw the second movie. Yep, and Harry Connick Jr. was in that, plus Matthew Modine. Yes. I've actually been get in contacting Harry Connick Jr. trying to get him to come and see the bell. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Joanna. Well, I'm going to have to jump off of here because I've got to go change shifts. If I get a chance, I'll try to come back on this afternoon. Appreciate you all joining and jumping in there. A-5 Vigie. Yep, that's a Navy aircraft. I worked on those. So, y'all take care, and hopefully I'll be back later on. Appreciate y'all.